goes in pretty darn deep. Oh, <laughs> there's open, so it can go in deep as it wants. So you can see there on the other side, it can go all the way through. So, oh god, I'm driving all the way in. That's perfect. Um, hopefully, this will give us reinforcement for our setup. And I think if they are the same length, we don't have to worry about too much. I think they are. I don't think this one's might be a little bit wider. I hope not, but let's, let's find out. We'll measure with a caliper instead of guesstimating. And I'm hoping the back area is still kind of shimmer small for the reason of us trying to um, making sure that we don't have any problem with our independent brake handle hitting it from the back like we had last time with the other one. So let's see. Let me kind of close this guy up too as well, get an idea of how he would fit. Oh, look at that. They're pretty nice on him. It's kind of wearing out, I understand. There we go. Doesn't wanna I think with the paint and everything, but it's okay, it's 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 getting there. It's not bad. We have to almost squish him to get him to come in alignment with his front. This is his front, so it's not like we changed on because it's kind of warping because it's kind of wearing out, you can see there. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a measurement of the, the diameter. I got a caliper here, so you can actually see if it's any bigger or any smaller. We have to be concerned about that area. I thought, oh, there it goes. All right, so, sorry, I got a lot of stuff on here. Let me try to get all these stuff out of the way. I think we can focus on what we're trying to focus on. All right, so let's go and do this. We're gonna take a caliper. And we are going to measure. Alright, so here we go. I guess we'll set it to inch because everyone knows inches, right? Zero. Okay, zeroed out. Okay, let's take the new guy here. And let's give him an opening. We're just opening from the, the back here to the front. How thick he is, sort of. Okay, so he's 2.32 inches. That's what we got, okay? So 2.32 inches. Um, I'm sure height is now a bigger deal. But let's, we can do height too just to see. 2.32 inches by about 3 inches high. Okay, let's check out this guy here, our original. Where are you? Here's with the throttle. There we go. I know it's kind of, kind of, not that pretty compared to the new one of course okay so let's check out his thickness not from the switch area just pretty much right there like we did the other one he's 2.2 Ooh, so he actually is a little bit slightly smaller he's not too much beefier uh, so that might create a little bit of problem movement wise so he's 2.25 uh, let's just d double check this guy again to make sure we give him the benefit of the doubt this guy is 2.38, so hopefully his back plate is the same size. It's just that his front is more beefier. If his front's more beefier, that should be no problem interference-wise. But his back plate is the one that rests on the brakes. Uh, do you remember the brakes here? The brakes here, it, this when it goes in back here, it rests it right there, right? I'm sorry. See that? It rests it right here on the back plate. So, for instance... When we come around here, depending on how we're going to do our teeth again. Let me see if I can get this guy on here. So, he's sitting like right there, right? And this guy's back plate, it's normally like right right there. So, it, it rests like here. So, I assume there's a handlebar and the throttle and everything's in there. So, the only concern I have would be like the clearance issue with him. He actually rests more like right in here, actually, the little black area. So he's like right there. So this thing should close up properly. In fact, here we can do it right now to see if it actually does close. I know I wasn't going to work on the front, but I'm kind of curious to know how things are going to be fitting first. All right, so let's do this. Let's go and open this guy back up for a second. Sorry, go back and forth on him. Put microfiber on it. Keep on dragging them around. You can see they they do scratch kind of easily. 
A little microfiber helps a little bit dampen the, the scratch marks. All right, let's take this back plate. We just want the back plate and the teeth. So we're gonna find out right now how he's gonna sit with the teeth and everything inside the groove. Almost there. We'll replace this with our Allen bolt, so it wouldn't matter really. Here. Totally forgot about that. But let's see if we can actually take him and assemble him. Let's see where his teeth is going to lay. Let me bring my Phillips. I was going to save all my energy this morning to prepare for this guy, but that's okay. Uh, we got we to gotta do this to get the idea to where we're heading forward on. Okay, let me drop it now. I have to drop it. Okay, so we have to put this guy first. Assuming his throttle cable is already in there. And let's go get the teeth marks. Teeth this size somewhere right there. There we go. Man, my snot is dripping, sorry. <laughs> All right, not a pleasant sight to try and show you guys. All right, here we go. Get my towel here. Where's my little tissue? Oh, blow my nose. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's try this again. See, there's a teeth mark right there, right? So let me see if I can bring a chair. That will be easier for us. Let's so this new switches again. One thing we have to worry about is his um, wiring, but that shouldn't be a big problem. We can probably tap into it properly find out which wire is really doing what functionality okay let's see this real quick here and the other one's just going to a bunch of switches so it's not a big deal all right so what I'm gonna do there we go all right so I'm gonna go ahead and try install this So I'm going to get the teeth aligned, put the screwdriver in my pocket so I'll have it close, ready to go. I'll get one Phillips just to make sure I get ahead of time. That's all I got, bless up. That's with two hands, right? All right, so here we go. Got the teeth in there now. Or, oh yeah, oh yeah, this teeth fits perfect. Now again, it's going to have some grooves smacked, so that's just to expect it. I'm going to put the Phillips on there now. Have it in my pocket, so. <coughs> there we go. Get the other teeth. I believe the other teeth is actually closing itself, so that's a good thing. finger muscle there all right good idea to see how these controls will fit into each, each other now it's still loose because again we dragged it down you remember that when we when we I did the drill bit I kind of yanked it downward so I just want to make sure this mirror gets tilted more inclined so we can have a more hole uh, speaking of which here, I'll just show you so far it looks phenomenal I wish I could get all the, the functionality to work on this switch, but we could probably, maybe, I don't know, we might be able to do it, but we'll probably have to shoot that for a later time. Maybe on our next project if we happen to have other issues in the front or something. But you can see here, cleanly flushed. There we go. There's an opening here because the throttle needs to actually ride, so that's normal. Okay, so it actually looks pretty cool, too. Matches our blue handlebar. Wow. Nice, really nice. Nice to have new switches. And it also one that actually had the teeth working. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's magnet everywhere. He jumped off the phone and landed right there in the, the scooter. <laughs> All right, he's back in here now. Okay. Let's um, push this arm button probably somewhere here. 
See, there's a little arm button on him. There we go. There we go. He's charging again. Keep him charged. He's 78, but he's still charging. I keep him running because that way they don't struggle on the last charge or something like that. So there we go. And then this guy here was swinged over. And again, that's the only thing I was afraid of. See that? He's okay. Now look at that. There's so much good clearance here. So he's just more beefier in the front. So what made him more, they put more plastic, I guess, maybe forward. Um, so I guess that's kind of good for us. But yeah, and then the brakes will be sitting smack next to him, like right there. See that? He still has clearance to tilt or do whatever he pleases. He still has about, I'd say a good, probably this one looks like a good centimeter of clearance. You guys can't tell certain angles because it looks like it's covering, but you see there? That's like a centimeter right there of clearance that he can tilt. And he is probably tilting to his maximum point because, again, we watch. I can see. I can move forward, which is actually grinding on the teeth. I think I can move backward. See that? So we're going to actually cement it for as back as we can. We'll range it accordingly to see how our mirror actually sits with this the same way. So uh, we can leave this guy on here for a security hold. That way he doesn't get really dinked up too bad. We'll put this guy back here. We'll just actually maybe install the other one just the same. Let's get it a little by. His button feels a little bit more sturdier. Brand new, of course. Not bad, huh? They're only 20 bucks, so it's not a big deal. You could probably get them on eBay or something. Uh, let's see. Check this out. Let's go ahead and look at this guy here. <clears throat> okay, let's look at the next one here that we're going to replace. Now, this one will probably be plug and play because this actually takes a six... Six prong, prong connection, just the same. So we got already done with, the, oh no, we're working on this guy next. Okay, this is our original. You can see here, six, it's a total of nine, but it actually uses only eight, sorry. So it's a nine prong harness, but it uses only really exit connector. You can see one's missing, the middle one right here. So other than that, it's the same. See the new one, the middle one's missing too. Same angle. That same angle. Oh, okay. And then, yeah, I feel pretty good actually. Other than my head cold, apologize. Um, I feel really nice. I don't feel like out of it or anything like that. Uh, maybe because I got new parts, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so here we go. These ones look really nice. Look at this one. A much more awesome or like a feel grip, you know? I think they improved on a lot. Again, keep in mind, this bike was 2013, so. You know, you're you're talking about this car. This probably came in 2018-19 design. So you're talking about almost a good five, six, seven years of innovation. So there we go. 2000, six years. Sorry. So if you do your math, but this came out 2019. But yeah, much more sturdier plastic. The wiring harness, different color codes. You can never go by these color codes. They just select whatever wires there are. There's no pink wire on this one, but. It's probably going to have the same functionality because it's going to be plugged in directly to your six prong wire. We'll find out. <laughs> Excuse me. What's great about this one also is, um, let's see here. I didn't. Let's see if I can remove this guy. Take out the back and we'll check out the internal again. All the guts. Lefty Lucy here. Well, they won. They drove this one pretty well. There you go. All right. So let's take a look at that one and let's look at this one. So this is the original one. Of course, this is the blue one you can see here. I believe they're tilted same angle and same side. I'll take a snapshot of that. Same kind of wires set up here on this end. Same six prong wire. Same upside down a little bit, but when tilt it the same. That way we can both see it. So it's not bad. You can see here the wire harness. You can see this guy's wire harness. Let's see what's actually is missing. So they have a little clip here to hold this guy sort of on there. This one, they don't need the clip anymore. They have it somewhere here. That looked like a little rubber or a boot there. This has something else too. Same switch magnet. You remember this thing that broke? I don't know. They they looked at this. They made this a solid. 
this whole thing is probably a solid and it's covered too so we fixed ours you can see how ours was a hexagon that kind of fitted in there this one's perfectly round so there's probably no way of repairing this if ever this one gets damaged but that's okay I mean it looks like now it's a solid piece that's molded onto the whole body aluminum versus this one which is was plastic actually now I do feel the difference this is plastic and this is probably aluminum this is solid aluminum maybe and it's coated with a rubberized uh, plastic feel this is actually part plastic and part aluminum where the you know the vulnerable points are where this was actually this is probably solid aluminum here in fact here let me see if I can take my magnet and see if it's actually a little bit uh, uh, magnetizable I'm not sure it is but we'll find out so of course this is not but this one it's not either because it's aluminum yeah, but do that smacked of course this is magnet yeah these are not magnetized because they're aluminum aluminum is not magnetizable okay so yeah this is great um let's go ahead and fit this in there as well on our new little hole there i know we're going to take it off too once we put the allen bolts and everything but it's kind of nice to get a feel for this of where it's going to be located also keeps it out of harm's way that way it won't scratch up or anything because our handlebars is pretty much open free so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and put these guys on there now get a feel for them and see how they actually will ride down a little bit just like that we did for this guy i got a feeling it's going to be turning out really well once we put the new jb weld on there i don't know how jb weld will stick on this guy but if it doesn't that's fine too because we wanted to actually fill in the bars uh uh area hole where it's not used so i think if we do that way we'd probably be okay to say so let me go ahead and get that one out of the way sorry you're gonna hear me <laughs> blow from time to time bear with me all right. All right. Let me see. Get my flat to Phillips. All right. Let's go out there and put this guy on there. Cool. I guess you can probably see the whole area too. Coming from the front. Look at that. I think the color looks really nice. Makes it almost look like a new scooter, huh? Uh, okay. I'm glad I got it. 20 bucks ain't bad, huh? We spent quite a bit of time trying to fix the other one. I think we spent almost an hour <laughs> trying to fix the teeth and everything. So sometimes things are not worth it. Just replace them. That's what's great about Chinese scooter parts. Some parts are reasonably priced. You know, some stuff that you can get. They make mass quantity of them. All right, so there we go. We got our teeth here. There's our teeth. You see our teeth is actually powder coated. So it's probably not going to stick to our JB weld, which is fine. We just want the JB weld to actually fill in the crits area that needs to fill in here. So if I'm not mistaken, this is where the mirror is. So, And we want to actually test this one out too to make sure that hole is the same as I promised you. So let me go over here. Get my little stud adapter. And screw them in. All right, so here we go. Let's try I know it looks so much like it's smaller, but because it's new paint and it's black, it makes things look skinnier opening than they are. But yeah, it's screwed in. Oh, sorry. See that? No problem here, see? It's screwed in. This is the new back plate. Yep. So let's go ahead and get this guy temporary with the Phillips. Yeah, I'll be so much more pleased to actually fix the front once I actually nail the back one. So we can get that one out of the way. So let's go and put his back. So I'm going to line his teeth, hoping to align it where the bars are. This is where I can put a, a resolution zoom in this. There we go. And I'm going to try to. Oh, this is the best I could do, unfortunately. All right, so I'm going to put his teeth in here. Put his mirror 8M on top, of course. And come from back here. All right, let's see actually how his teeth is going to ride next this time. This is way too low, of course, so the teeth has to come up. You can see here where I'm getting at. See, if his teeth was like right there, it would have been way too low. The mirror would be tilting way too low. 
I mean, it'll be going a little bit horizontal. So his teeth moves up, and if it moves up, you can see it's almost coming into that little slot there. Perfect. There it is, see? This guy's teeth actually comes in. Well, the other one, you remember, we had to force it in. I guess things are new and much easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and mount him to kind of hold him in place. So I think these switches are going to be fantastic. I don't think they'll give us much problem other than configuring the wiring correctly. And again, this side wiring, it's I'll show you real quick here. He's plug and play. He has six prongs, should match the other six prong. So let me go and put this guy in here. Let me bolt this in there first. See there, it closes nicely. Not securely yet, but it's nicely. Okay. Again, we're going to replace these fillets with Allen bolts, but we're just putting this right now as a temporary hold. Also, he flushes really nicely against the grip, which we needed to make sure it comes out this way. And also, let's take a measurement of him, too. We forgot to measure, I guess, the side width, right, on the, both of them? Because we need to make sure that they know are not longer. Because, remember, again, it broke our our uh, handlebar front cover for that reason of the, the switches didn't give enough adequate room to push the brake lever forward. So I forgot to take a measurement of the side width. So let's do that. We'll get this on there. We'll do a quick side width reference. All right. Just kind of snugging it a little bit. Okay. In fact, I almost attempted to put JB Weld now, right? Okay, so you can see here, it looks fantastic. Look at that. I just love that blue. And black, I never really plan to add blue color to this whole setup at all whatsoever. But I ordered red ones, right? But they didn't have anything there. They gave me a blue, a blue one. I'm like, all right, I'll live with it. And then I come to find out, blue doesn't actually, you know, doesn't do too much uh, injustice, you could say. You know, it makes it look like the police uh, siren or something. <laughs> blue color. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe people drive a little bit more cautious with me because we have a little bit of blue on us now blue and a little bit of red um so let's go ahead and make sure this brake lever here has an opportunity to meet his meet his match here literally <laughs> uh, and then we also have the blue uh, ncy on the other end coming and it's going to probably match this more this blue than this blue this is more like a pale uh, sort of baby blue i could say this one more a teal blue we'll know we'll see but you can see here he has enough clearance as well Okay, so they're good. They're all good. I'm really happy. This thing is going to work out perfectly. And you can see his wiring harness here. This is his old original. You can see there. It's the same six prong, which this will plug into. Same six prong. You can see one that's missing right there. There you go. See that one missing? This one should also be missing too. See there? It's missing it. You can see. It's more of the bigger uh, T looking, fatter T than all the rest because he doesn't have a lead in there you see from the back too he's gone all right so this will plug in like right here we'll just do a little temporary plug to make sure so this guy's plug and play on this side see he has no problem whatsoever but unfortunately this side here you can see there this will take only i don't know why there's four prongs here to be honest with you it's like they short as a wire or something see there's four of them here but when he connects, there's only three that really connects to his switch, see? So that gets to me there. In fact, our auto start probably would have worked had we had all four prongs live. Who knows? Really, I really, you know, don't doubt it now. Because there's four wires going into our electrical system unless there's two ground, which they're probably the same. That's why they probably figured you don't need another ground. So that's the only thing I can think of. There's a skunk wire. That orange wire and then there's two green wires which i assume they're probably the same these two are ground so they probably just gave us one ground that could be the possibility of why they didn't do it that way if that's the case then we can manipulate that in order to get another ground for independent so you remember how we had the continuity i'll, sh I'll sort of try to explain what i mean here we go well it's, the other one's already <laughs> plugged on so it wouldn't matter right now but um you remember going back to the the switch in there we had the same, see this guy right here and this guy here, they're both ground. Or the green wire, I can't. Yeah, the green wire is ground. Let's make sure. This green wire here is ground. So all the ground, they tied it together and brought it in. So let's say if this was going in, right? Let's see how the green wire lines up. This guy needs to face inward like this. 
okay and the green wire ground it's on this side right here the left or my right or your right also okay so let's so we face this one you can see here one of the green wires is on the the right hand side just like we anticipated so what they did was they probably tied all these guys together being ground so <clears throat> so they wouldn't have to use a fourth wire and versus the other one then use a six prong which i guess they want to make sure they're all independent ground for whatever reason i don't know uh we'll find out but remember again we we're doing our own meter test for continuity continuity is just check to make sure the wire is you know, like this is a wire that's has the same continuity because it's connected that's all continuity is checking for if there was ever a break in the line or anything like that then there's no continuity but if these wires are supposed to join together then you'll hear a beeping noise and that's all we're checking for these wires were joined together somewhere in the circuitry okay so let's set it to ohms again and we'll click it to where it says beeping signal there we go i just use the basic i'm not really tech savvy on current voltage and ohms or anything like that so i just know the basic enough to help me decide how you know the electrical system works sort of okay so here we go we're gonna go and put our probe here again either one it doesn't matter we're not testing for polarity of voltage or anything like that so i'm gonna get ohm here and here we go we're gonna hear it beep see that that's the same continuity now when i drag it to the green wire no oh, i don't hear continuity there should have heard continuity because i thought they joined it to somewhat together so let me try this again is there any wire before him no, there's no continuity there there's no kind but i don't think there's continuity here just because we switched the leads to this one it's gonna be the same so i don't see this wire here anywhere but i know that this wire jumps to here though so it, this wire here the kill switch is turned on allows this guy to be triggered as well so that's one thing but there's no other ground other than this green wire is a ground um let me see the skunk wire is the same continuity I doubt it though. Skunk wire is your kill switch wire. More than like I call it skunk wire. It could be anything. See, there's no continuity between the ground and the skunk wire. Nor anywhere. Whoa, you hear that? See, I knew it. Wait a minute, am I touching something else different? Look, I got it probed on the green, right? Now this is really probed on the green. I mean, I'm pushing it directly on the green solder. Make sure I'm not touching the, and now I'm touching the blue wire here. Look at that, see? Oh, wow. There was continuity. I just didn't do it right. I don't know. You guys saw me did it, huh? And it didn't make a beep, but now it's starting to sudden decides to beep. Did we just short us something or we turn on the switch? We might have. I'm going to turn off the kill switch, okay? And let's see if it actually creates a contact again. Maybe that's why I did different. Okay, here we go. So when we turn on the kill switch, it grounds the switch, which allows it to function. Or whatever. Uh, right now, let's see if the switch is off or on. Okay, and right now the switch is killed. That means the switch is off. I mean, the kill. It's kind of hard to manipulate your uh, saying this, but let's just say the scooter will not turn on because the kill switch is it's on. Kill switch is when it's off, it's on. Okay, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but you know what I mean, right? When the kill switch is turned to do its job, let's say uh, the kill switch is um, effectively. Enabled. I see this use the word enabled. So the kill switch is enabled. Okay. This one, when it right here opens, that means the kill switch is disabled. So let's turn the kill switch enabled. I was going to attempt to say on, but then to throw you off. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to, right now the kill switch is, is enabled because it's actually supposed to say no driving sort of with a cross. I think that's what that means, really. I thought it was a speaker icon. I mean, like a headphone icon or anything. But let's, let's just assume that there's no driving, okay? It says X on that little steering wheel column, sort of. I guess it's a steering wheel column or what, but the thing is like electrical, you know, on switch or something like that. But anyway, we'll just assume that's a steering wheel column. There's no driving capable because there's X right there. So the switch, the kill switch is enabled enable okay so here we go we're gonna probe this guy again i'm gonna jab him in the blue i'm gonna touch the green with the red either one doesn't really matter you guys see there it says open load there's mean there's no line connector or open line whichever you want remember that break in the line i was talking about so if there's a good connection between the two it will make a sound it'll give it'll show some resistance so there you go there's no resistance but there is resistance this one because they're the same that means it's not going to enable the ground to work on this guy either now the minute we 
uh, uh, pretty much put the kill switch disabled. Disabled, okay? The kill switch disabled, so that means the scooter is allowed to start now because the kill switch is disabled or AKA on, or AKA off, let's say. <laughs> the kill switch is off, meaning it's enabled. This should now read continuity. Here we go. There, see? So the switch is working. So when it's actually turned on like this, it's why your scooter works now. Is because when it's actually, see the reason why mine probably didn't work with the auto start is probably because that fourth prong is missing. And that fourth prong was probably what's controlling the independent switching of these things. So what it did was we wanted the kill switch to leave this guy on for us while we had the auto start of the alarm working. I'm thinking, I'm just hypothetically thinking. Um, so this one had to be turned on. So uh, the kill switch will have to be disabled. So it's going to be an on position where it allows it to start the scooter. And I guess if we had that fourth wire, this this would have its own independent ground, which will allow this to work even though we're not using this one right now. We're using the remote alarm to actually start the, uh, start the scooter. That would have been a different story. But however, they did the shortcut. They put the ground and both of them together. So when this kill switch is enabled, uh, turn on or turn off, sorry, when this quill switch is disabled, it allows you to start your scooter. It allows you to create the ground shortage it needed for this button to actually be working. But if it had independent ground and this had independent ground, then it will serve a different purpose. You you would be able to use a, a, a sort of external starter and then just have this there. So let's go ahead and check this out again. So the only thing I did different is the switching. Okay, so right now... I can, I can tell you right now, not even remembering what I had to switch on last, but I can tell you that since it's shorting, the kill switch is disabled. Am I right? The kill switch is disabled. Yep. See, this one right here, that means the kill switch is enabled. That means it's supposed to do its job. It's supposed to kill the engine. So that was correct. All right. So we kind of get that sort of idea here. So when we manipulate the other wires, we'll find out. So we'll put these guys in the back here because, again, we're not going to be using them for a while. In fact, I shouldn't use the, the Phillips to actually screw these guys in, you know, because that way we can prepare those guys to have Allen sockets already. That way I won't lose more screws. So let me do that. Um, now I should want to be able to take this guy off from each other. So let me try try remove this guy off, shall we? There we go. Let me, let me get a cloth. Let me get a thicker. Uh, well, it's going to be the same cloth, but it's a little bit nicer, not dirty. Okay, so let me go and try. Now this time I have to break this off. We're going to get some new mirrors on there anyway, so let's see here. Something that will give us a little bit more leverage hole. Something, something. This guy will give us leverage hole. He might even break it, but we want to make sure we can twist it off. And we need leverage to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is probably hold it by the ram mount, or maybe have the ram mount hold it by it. Who knows? All right, so let's go ahead and take this guy off. I said I was going to work on the rear, right? But now this is turning out to be more of the handlebar episode. That's <laughs> just fine. All right, so... Don't want to force it to close where it's going to, you know, grip and break our ram mount. Even though our ram mount is pretty durable. That guy's not going anywhere, but uh, don't want to get on the paint. All right, not yet. I just, it just needs to be a little firm. Not doesn't have to be that wide yet. There we go. Maybe just, no, I just don't want to put that much pressure on it. There we go. It's just enough firm here. Let me see if I can twist it by hand. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, yeah. It was tight, but I was able to do it. I want to make sure I scrape anything. Get the cloth back on this guy. He's coming loose. In fact, he's probably already loose already. Okay, here we go. There we go. So you can see the ram mount's adapter, eight millimeter to eight millimeters, just the same. Oh, the thread looks a little different. The ram mount looks a little thicker, doesn't it? Huh. I'm a little concerned now. Let's look at this guy. He has his washer there. There's the ram mount. See, he has a little thing there. He has a little slot there as well. Take him off. But let's see if this guy will even 
The thread looks so much different. It's probably WD-40 for one thing. Uh, back here, I'll do it now. This is so rusty looking. That's probably one reason why I should want to take it off, huh? Well, for one thing, it'll help me unloosen this guy off anyway. All right. So let's actually see. This guy will probably, will probably go on this side anyway. So let's see this thread. It looks a little bit bigger thread, doesn't it? I don't even know if it'll... I mean, it should go in smoothly, you know? And it actually is. I feel like already gripping. Wow. That's, even though it looks so much thicker thread, it actually is the right thread for it. God, it looks can be deceiving. Look at that. Go deep as I want to, more more likely. Wow. Very nice. So the ram mount has that little square bolt there that we need to take off to in order to remove this guy. There you go. Look at that. Where it turns and stops, we never know. So yeah, the mirror is going to be like this. Again, the new mirror is going to be pretty freaking awesome. It's going to be the same design sort of, but it's going to have where we can actually tilt this guy. Like anywhere like this, not just this part, you know, but it's going to be, be able to do this guy right here. So looking forward to that. Oh, shoot. Shouldn't put WD-40 in there. That's okay. Be a nice uh, loop a little bit, right? Whatever needs to be blended in, blended in. But we're going to put, we're going to put blue Loctite. We don't want WD-40 hang out with our blue Loctite. So more than likely, we'll probably wipe that clean or suck it out dry with a shop vac or something. But we'll let we'll let WD forty do his thing. <sighs> He'll clean up the surface for us a little bit. But yeah, in the meantime, let's get this guy off. Interesting to note. There we go. We know we just took it off. We could have sprayed it independently. We could still do that, but I think it'll be okay. All right. So let's go ahead and take this guy off. Now I'm not sure if I have a socket for him. He might be a 17 millimeter. I'm guessing. Let's see. Here is our 17, should say it, there we go, 17 millimeter, let's check them out, let's see if it won't fit in there, holy smoke, it is 17 millimeter, however we cannot drive them out because <laughs> it's not long enough, but we do have one that's long enough, I believe these are 17 millimeter impact as well, and we can get the socket driver for that. <laughs> And we'll wait for our new mirrors to reassemble this ram mount on there. So that's going to be fun. Look at that. It can almost, there's such a high torque, I could probably twist it by hand. There you go, look, I did. Because I could look like I got so much leverage here. <laughs> twist the whole bolt by hand. Okay, I should go in there. Ew. Ew. Now this mirror is interesting. Okay, so now I have to get to the other level of this guy. He's got one level in there. He broke off from that round one, I guess. So you can see there's a flat side, thank goodness. So we'll probably need to use something to grip that one as well. Let's see if I can... He's not like a ranch, sort of, so he's more like... I don't want to use a vice grip. I mean, it has a perfect square for us already. There's no need to harm it some more. So I just need an adjustable... There we go. Like this guy here. Getting a screw on the screw. All right, this guy's taking me to church right now. Or he thinks he is. Let's find out. Okay, there should be a flat side to this. There you go. There we go. There's a flat side. All right, so let me go ahead. Lefty Lucy, same principle. Wow. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Okay. I think, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to strip. Oh, smoke. Oh, look at that. Yikes. It wasn't even that much thread, to be honest with you. That's probably the reason why he's just limboing. All right. It's like it was like barely on there. It was like only a, only probably look at this how much really thread he got in there with less than probably this looks like a good maybe centimeter and a half. You want to at least get <laughs> a little bit more than that, I would figure. But that's blue Loctite for you, or maybe red Loctite. I don't know. 
but yeah, that's quite a bit nastiness there. All right, so let's put these guys aside. They won't be used anyway. The main idea is to get this guy's cleaned up. These guys will be ready to be put back on. I think the washer took a little bit more space than we wanted to, but that's the way it goes. So let's get these guys a spray in their own right. Uh, where are the other ones? Where's the adapter? Where we're... Didn't we have a, not the ram mount adapter, but didn't we have a, see the ram mount's nothing but a hollow. So that was it? That was just this part and this part? That was it? That's your ram mount adapter here for your mirror. If that's the case, and let's give this guy a spray, and including his washer there. Where's the other one? Didn't he have another washer on the other side there? That was it. The lug nut's there, the washer's there. I thought he had another washer's on the bottom of this, or he never did. Maybe we took it out already, didn't know it. I can't remember. Really can't remember. Uh, if he didn't have another washer, then I'm wrong. Oh, wait. I was seeing things for a second there. Oh, there he is. See, I knew there was another washer somewhere. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just leave it with some WD-40 on there. Give it a good spray down. Nasty. Let's see if I can get this guy out of here first. Spread him out. There we go. Just let that sit with WD-40. It'll help remove the rust. I did want to use the other guy who can uh, rust oleum. That doesn't look like it probably made the metal saw. You remember what happened to our bleeder bolt, right? I think because I did that with that one. It, why it maybe stripped prematurely or something happened to it. So I learned my lesson there. I'm just going to use WD-40. I think certain chemicals, when you put it on there too long, that's why it recommends 30 minutes, no more. <laughs> it will eat at the metal and do some more damage that you didn't anticipate but for right now let's go ahead and put these guys away and we're gonna actually rob those Phillips there from them so let's go and let's go and do that let's go and get these guys here to stall back on there that way we know which one is which so they're gonna take the small guys here these guys here are gonna fit those guys and these two right here are gonna fit the the big one the big shebang believe I'm missing a couple of washers which is expected when we pull things in we'll just give them new washers we got plenty so let's take our where's our little where's our little bin of well they're probably in here there they are let's say where the heck are you okay. so there we go we're gonna give them new ones Now we just gotta go find them. <laughs> Got a bit, bunch of scattered ones here. So we're trying to find something like this one here. Yeah, and the black. Black would be nice. Not these guys. There they are. Bunch of them hanging around here. There's one out of the bunch. Whoa, 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 whoa. Should have been more careful. Are these the same? Probably not. Nope, too big. Too small. <laughs> there we go. These three somewhat look the same. I think these two are the same. These two are the same. This is probably too small. It's got to be a perfect size. There we go. Three so far. These three are the same. We found like three sets of everything, right? Almost three sets of everything. Just need one more of those guys. Too big. Too...
Nope, too big again. And now we gotta find the four sets of these guys. So we're just trying. Well, actually, you know what? Let's see if I'm not mistaken. These guys will fit. No, they probably won't. See, these guys won't fit them. So only these guys will fit. So I mean, we have four here, including the old one. Uh, actually, no, including the, the same one. I think that'll be fine. Uh, we'll stick with this. Okay, so we'll make sure how we're gonna put this. Come through here. Put them through here. Okay, we're not gonna put pull Loctite on them, but we will make sure that they get mounted on there so we know there's their bolt. It's there to be taken off. Oh, come on. Cool. There we go. The washers, they should be a little bit more tighter. We won't tighten it on until we finalize it with JB Weld. All right, there we go. Let's put these guys back. All assortment. I guess this first couple of episodes here is going to be about handlebars, which we didn't anticipate. <laughs> it's all started with us just opening that handlebar. All right, that's okay. One thing will lead to another shortcut. I mean, another um, lesser time spent, you know, during that time when needed. So that's always an investment. All right, let's go ahead and get the right Allen for this. Again, I got the the standard matrix as well coming, so that's going to be nice to be able to actually have complete Allen sockets available for all types of unusual. I believe this one's H4 and the other one's H5. So let's go and get our socket driver. We could probably do it by hand, really. There we go. Just a little extension maybe to help. All right, so let's go ahead and remove one and then put one at a time. Okay, bring this in. That's my Phillips. There we go. Still my Phillips over there. Oh, shit. Gave this guy. No, he doesn't. I think we cleaned him already. But anyway. It wouldn't be that effort to give him a little bit more. What do you call that? Oh, actually, you know what? I want to keep his, his paint on there. Oh, I just need his thread to actually maybe take a dip to remove any rust or anything like that. So let me go ahead and loosen this guy back. Be, he can take a dip, just this part. There you go. Take a dip with all your friends. We could probably give new washers, so I'm not worried about the washers. Those ones are look pretty like like we have a bunch of them. All right, so let's get get the Phillips soon. Let me wipe this guy back out. Holy smoly! Now I realize how much detail is involved when you're trying to make things nice. Um, yeah, th this scooter would have been rode like almost six seven months ago if I didn't really care too much. Just trying to bolt it on there, but I do care. And we're going to make it the best we can with what we have. So, here we go. Let's go ahead and get back on there and get this exchanged out. I'll just do this over here first because we're already over here with the chair. Okay. A Phillips for a Phillips. I mean, a Phillips for an Allen. <laughs> Sure, it's gonna get lighter if I tilt it this angle. Maybe. There we go. Gotta remove one first in order to put the other one in. Yeah. I don't think he'll come loose, right? He won't do that to us. He can't come loose. My hand smells like WD-40. Right, he's not all the way out yet. Looks so much nicer with Allen bolts, though. You can see here, this is, I mean, this is a nice fill-up, but still, 
Allen bolts, even with a brand new one. Okay, so let's see here. I guess we could put more of his flat side facing and his round side glazing. So we're going to put more of the glazing round side toward us. That'd be crazy if this thing doesn't fit into the right slot, which it should. There we go. Got to be able to do it by hand. There we go. He's sealing up. There we go. Nice. He actually grips already. Uh, I didn't just hand torching him. I mean, hand tightening him, which is a good sign. Okay, now we can take this guy off. Let's see how much more machine it looks. Super sweet. I know we're going to take this off again anyway, but actually this guy's probably, yeah, we're going to take him off anyway because we got JB Weld them all to cover our, our hole that we made a little bit more down there. But that's how you guys would probably do it too if you guys want to extend your mirrors and you don't have the mirror that actually allows you to tilt from the base. Just move the teeth around. Just make sure you have clearance again with the issue of your housing. That's the only concern you probably would have. Just make sure your back of your brake lever doesn't you know, hit it. Oh, that's right. We're going to measure the width of this too. Forgot about that. So many things. I know I get distracted. I get caught up in one thing and then led to another thing and then I'm way off subject. And then it's lunchtime, right? Okay, so got that one out. Swapped them. Took out his old Phillips. It's kind of nice. We, we swapped them for the more beautiful Allen. From the old Phillips. So there we go. We're gonna go ahead and now get this two here, swamp out the other two and be complete. It does take an H4. Okay, this one's gonna be a little bit back against the sun, but let's see what I can do. Yeah, it's gonna be a little pitch dark, apologize, not really a good angle. Let's see if I can turn. I can turn there might be some hope. There we go, a little bit of hope. Take out the top. Yeah, again, these are just snugged in there by hand or they're not they're not seriously torqued. Uh, okay, don't fall off, don't fall off. I'll put you on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is try to get the smooth side. And now uh, there isn't any smooth side, unfortunately, like this one right here has showed a little bit of silver. We'll have to do. We'll make sure the teeth is still in this groove because you don't want to tighten this and damage the teeth. Especially you got new teeth. <laughs> okay, there we go. The teeth is still in this groove. Within that vicinity, anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and put this guy out. <clears throat> Perfect. Last one for him. And then these four Phillips are going to go into our old one. Get those guys ready to go. So, they're just driving in nicely, the threads. In fact, I could probably feel like I, if I tighten them down, they probably would stick. But this one isn't it, because the reason why is his teeth is not properly aligned there. But it looks good though. Okay, let's check out the diameter now of our old one and our original one. So. Let's see how these guys are in lengthwise. Okay, you ready? Put them in on position. I can't do it the other way, but I'll flip it for you guys as soon as I capture him. Now I'm taking them all the way to the to the everything from the thread for where his socket is. So he's about 1.892 inch. 
and I'll do the other side over here. Take them all the way. One point eight seven nine. So they're about the same. One point eight seven nine. Okay. So let's go and look at our old one while we're putting it in and see. So just to show you what I did was I took it all the way from here, all the way from. I wouldn't see that. So oh, it's one point nine four now. One point nine one four. And let me make sure. Probably not reset it actually. Oh, it's reset to zero. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with this guy. Take him all the way over here. And I just kind of sort of slant a little bit, but that's so far. Okay, so about 194. Okay, so 194. Okay, that's pretty much the width we're going to expect. Okay, let's go and look at these guys. And let's get ready to screw them in with their old screws. So, part of the new with the old. Okay, let's see how these guys are. We'll, we'll clamshell them first. Meaning we'll screw them in first. All right, so, so which one? This one's one with the throttle. Goes with the little throttle sleeve indent. Okay, facing together like that. We'll put our screws in here. Put our screws in here. And just careful again, these things are like, sort of like, you know, we fixed the thread part, so try to make sure we screw it in nicely. ways to go we'll do it all the way because we want it snug we don't want it to damage itself during the looseness part so this guy might be the one that we fixed I maybe believe it was but it's closing up supposedly oh wow yeah there's where all our washes went we totally forgot to pull the washes out for these guys remember again we were, we were saying before we painted we pull out the washes from but we didn't totally forgot about that and I'm gonna try to see if I can get them out with a flathead there's like you can see there that's where all our wash is gone <laughs> i think there's two of them or even three of them that's crazy i keep compacting them i was wondering where all, that's where all our wash has gone missing it's like this guy right here all right so let's do this let's try to plow them out i believe we might need to use where's our golden charmer there he's always been dependable for us but now I don't see him anywhere. Let's see if I can use this guy here. He's just the same as a flathead. Yeah, I was going to use him to pull out the pin, so I got to be careful. I don't want to ruin him. We'll need to use him at another time. Flick it out. It's tagged in there really thick. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what to do, what to do. Might be something a little bit stronger. I didn't realize it's that much kegged in there. I think with the paint and everything, it kind of adds to it. I don't know what this this bigger Phillips, I mean, this bigger flathead will do for us, but we'll find out. You can tap a little bit, meaning. Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. We got one out. We chisel one out there. <laughs> uh, is it one only? Yeah, we only got one. All right, so let's see. There's another. There is another one in here. And let's see if we can chisel that guy out. All right, here we go. So it seems like I can do it, but I'll have to chisel. And I don't think this flat this flat head will grip it. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna bang it lightly with another screwdriver. There we go. He was coming out. There we go, we got third one out. Do not tell me there's a fourth one. This kind of really embedded in there deeply. So I think it was just two. Okay, so we got two out anyway. That's what we wanted. <sighs> nice. All right, let's go ahead and put our screws in there. Can't remember which one was broken. See, we got the top one's broken. Or the one there is the switch. So can't tell, remember again, this one's again. Which one was the one that's defective? Trying to see if I can see inside, but I can't. Oh well, that's fine. Just don't want to have it have extra washers that didn't use. See that? The minute I turn them, this thing starts shifting down. So let me go and straighten them back up. 
I might have to hold them in clamp position before I actually bolt them on. So this looks like it's been there's a good tights to hold on them. Okay, let's go and clamp them down while this still shows a little sign of nice flush. Still, it's spinning, but I don't feel like it's going in the other side. Of, there you go. Now it's going. All right, let's see. Oh boy. I think what it is is probably either super glue or paint, but more than likely, I think it's a super glue. All right, I'm surprised it actually closed. So we'll keep at that. So these guys are good. Let's measure them now. We'll get our caliper. Remember the old measurement was 1.945, right? In uh, width. So let's see if these guys are extended longer. If that's the case, we might have a problem. So let's zero this out. Okay, here we go. Take it all the way. Ooh, this is one point. Uh, it's about the same. One point nine two five, and it's being squished a little bit, so it does seem a little bit thinner. But objectively, again, it depends on what angle we're talking about. So it's about one point nine four. The other one, one one point nine four five. So slightly, might just be a little bit more plastic. So let's see here. This is actually even lesser. Well, it's because it's concave. Sorry. This thing right here is digging in. So I do it this way. Oh, this is actually even lesser. 1.94. Gotta get to the thread, too. Yeah, so this is actually a little bit thinner, almost by, you know, uh, maybe one millimeter. So we'll see if that will affect us. If the case is that it's there right here from here to the teeth. It's thin enough because it matters where the brake hits this guy, right? So this can be long as it wants to. It can reach a little bit further to the grip, which is fine. Because the grip's going to actually need to fill in space anyway. Um, preferably, if there wasn't thinner. This was thinner, it'd probably be much better because I can move the grip in more, actually. Preferably. <coughs> but if it doesn't, it won't affect the housing of our handlebars as long as this guy here. It's going to be where the teeth is. I think he might be having the same mark where the teeth is. And so our brake lever will be right here. And then our plastic and the bar cover will not get squished. So hopefully it's going to be the same situation. I uh, don't know yet. Uh, so this is snug. Yeah, it's snug. We'll make sure it doesn't come loose. You can see perfectly. Kind of X both of them. I would prefer it be upright cross, but that's okay. I'm not going to push it. Uh, maybe I should. <laughs> if I'm going to put things away, I might as well put things away the way I want it to, right? Okay, here we go. Oh man, this is already tight. I shouldn't be doing this. Okay, there you go. A little bit more. All right, so now it's perfect. Let's cross. This can go one more turn. Then it's perfect. All right, there we go. I'm happy now. All right, this is good to go. So you can see it's all tight. Before, remember, it had a problem. It wouldn't. So if everything did its job, it should be fine. Well, it took a beating here. We even fixed it with JB Weld. Yeah. You can hear it click, see? It's kind of, it's kind of just tough. Unlike this one here. You can hear this one click. This one's more stiffer. Almost silent. Didn't hear no click. I'm not sure it's a good thing, actually. Maybe it's a good thing we're not to have that clicking noise. Or maybe the button's going to wore out. Okay, let's go and put this guy back together. They should be the same, about the same extension. Yeah, see, there's no, no washer for him because he's on the surface. But we made sure our new one's got washers ready to go for their next installation. Let's see which one's the bad side. Okay, this one here. So when we thread it, we'll fill, we'll fill it out and see how, how much. In fact, we can put this guy first. Doesn't really matter, but just want to see how it feels any different. This one feels tight. 
right away. I think it's because of the paint. Paint adds on a little bit layer. So what you're doing is you're breaking through the paint. We uh, actually no, there's no excuse for that because we didn't paint it. This guy, we never painted the plastic, right? So it's just probably just tight. Now it's loose again. And we painted the side that doesn't have the thread, so there's no excuse there. All right, so now let's go ahead and put this guy in there. I can see him. <laughs> so we'll keep the washers aside because we're almost out of those small washers. Okay, there we go. It's kind of wobbling. Hopefully, feel itself in the groove. I think it's doing it. Yeah, I feel tightening it. Okay, here we go. This is the challenge here. It's not going anymore. I'm going to force it now. This is make it or break it here. This is like testing our super glue. All of a sudden, busts out loose. Does something funky, we'll know. This is probably digging into a little bit of that super glue residue, which is fine. We want it to open up anyway. All right, there we go. Knowing me, try to get everything straight. A little bit too much there. Got to back it up a little bit. There we go. Let's get this guy a little bit more going forward, I guess. All right, there we go. Now we can put them in the old wrapper. Keep them protected from further scratches if necessary. There was, wasn't there one more wrapper? floating somewhere but there we go I always remember my stuff somewhere sometimes oh, nice. so these guys are pretty awesome there's a part number there for something here's another part number for something else so 105 106 I can't remember which one came by so it's 105 106 well, we got 106 here 106 is where the start button goes from left to right, so I'd rather have, just in case, goes from right to left, I guess. So this is our right hand side. I think our start button should be the first one in there, the, the lower numeric number. I don't know, I just look weird like that. That's how I associate things. When you first start something, it should be starting with a low number, right? So I'm going to put it here, this probably stands for Switch 005, probably some kind of in-house, warehouse, switch left hand, which we'll know. Oh, we're going to need their harness, well this one we won't need, but this one we need to rob eventually from, so that's cool to know. Let's see if we can fit back in this bag here, keep it safe and protect it. In fact, you know, we don't need to put this bag back, I can just take it off. Like I need to put a few things. So, so the next usage. So here we go. This guy is back to his little bin here. I think we are set here. We're not gonna do anything until we get our new brake lever. I mean, not brake lever, our new mirror. So, in the meantime, uh, we can put these guys back into the little bin here. So let me do that. Put this guy back. So, put these switches back in there, and they're actually in two pieces, which is kind of nice. I mean, one whole piece, which is kind of nice. So, these mirrors here we won't be using, sadly to say. I mean, they did us well, what am I talking about? I only fell in love with it by the looks of it. It didn't really serve anything for us. I never did it, we'll use it. What am I kidding myself with? <laughs> yeah, you guys didn't really do me dishonor, that's why. You guys are now on the back burner. Cool. So there we go. We got that guy. We got this one. Now we can really focus again back to our tail, which we're intentionally was trying to try to do. And now it's lunchtime almost. <laughs> I didn't have breakfast, but I guess it's okay. I'm not feeling too much. If, I, if I'm going to have breakfast, I'm probably going to stop by maybe. But I really get, I want to get a lot more done than just, you know, sampling products. So I really want to earn my breakfast here. I mean, earn my lunch. So let me go ahead and try to get that tail end done. Oh, let's put these little two guys here back. Because we were actually running low of those guys, weren't we? All right, put them gets in here. I gotta really fix this guy. No one should actually have to keep 
facing this guy. He doesn't feel like he wants to lock on the other side. I gotta be careful too, because if he ever decides one day to not, he's gonna leave me out in the woods. All right, so let me go and get this squared away. Get the chair. Uh, so far, I'm pretty happy. I mean, this makes me happy. Really nice, really, really, really nice. It's nice to get something new. Introduce the new with the old, but mainly not to have any problems in the future, right? So I like that, I like the red. No more orange, no more ugly pale orange too, so that's kinda nice. I better not say too soon because we might end up having to reuse the old one because the, the electrical wiring might not be compatible. <laughs> but for the meantime, I'm gonna happy and think that's gonna work, which more than likely will, we'll make it work some way, somehow. Oh, let me bring this chair keep it here because I'll need to keep on keeping on. I'm trying to put things away, thinking I'm already done for the day or something. Nope, Michael, you're just starting, buddy. And we're just starting together. So let me put this to cover this. Oh. We do have some new screws here, which I'm excited to introduce to all the M6 types. Um, unfortunately, they're made in China, so we'll have to live with it. Hopefully, they're good screws. All right, let's see here. We'll put this in here. Um, this is our little toolbox here, which I still don't know where the gold, the gold flat screwdriver went last. Hopefully we'll find him someday. He probably fell in here. Like they can, they can hide, but they can't run, you know? Well, I'm not seeing him in here either. <laughs> Maybe he did run away this time for good. Uh, well. We got a lot of news from him. It's not like he didn't do us a lot of justice. All right, so we got Allen's here, our flathead. Just tying things up a little bit. Now these guys here, eventually we're gonna go and get those guys. Actually, we can get them now. We don't have to leave them soaked for that long. Let's put our trusty. I always use a good brand sensitive stuff when it comes to torque and caliper because you're dealing with your parts. Um, I wouldn't go the. I wouldn't recommend it. Harbor Freight, you know, unless you're on a really you know, just kind of cheapy project power budget that you're going to be figuring out. It might turn out to be the long cut. So yeah, these are like from uh, Auto Parts Store Performance Tool you can get. Come with oh, extra battery too, which it opens up right here. You can see there. Put the battery right in there. And you can just flick it back. Almost thought I lost this guy here. That means that I always had to push it on for it to read. That was kind of crazy. I think it got it back on, yeah. Maybe not fully on. I thought it was slick and just took it off real quick for show and tell, but no. It's like a wedge gap there, just like our cover here, which we gotta figure out why it's still not closing fully or going toward the front. More than likely, something on our part. <laughs> More than likely. So, we're not gonna force it. We're gonna try to really cross examine it, see what the deal is with that. Come on. It's like you troubleshoot a tool to. And use a tool that's just ridiculous. Your tool should be, I think it only stuck to one side. I think that's the way it is, or it probably is going to be, or maybe it's not. Maybe it does have the clamp and it's not doing it for us. No, that's it. It's going to show a wedge. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That one's safe. I like this little box too because you're tossing it around. It's going to get damaged. So we got everything else, the ranch here, things that we might not be needing for our setup yet. And then we're probably gonna need, we're gonna need this guy. I mean, this guy here. This guy we're gonna need. Because we're probably gonna start maybe introducing. Let's go and rinse those guys out and put them away. I hate for my stuff to be laying around for too long. So let me go ahead and bring these guys out here. Ooh, look at that, look, it's foaming a little gel already. Just in case these guys will be appropriate. Just kind of clean them out. All right, this guy here. Use for a later time. <laughs> oh. I think cold is the least of my worries. I'll say. All right, come on, buddy. 
give it a good rub. Look at that, you get all that little nasty rust stain right off. Yeah, I know we have our Scotch Bright there. Uh, it's fine like this. We don't need no Scotch Bright. But maybe we do. <laughs> this guy's pretty tough. There goes our trusty Scotch Bright that's been with us through just like our never ending Loctite. Finally, after what, year and a half, it finally gave up on us. I didn't use it a year and a half consecutively, but it's been with me since I first started building the scooter. Get all the threads cleaned. This one looks like they're the same adapter, really. Look at that. Same one. This one just has more blue Loctite um, wall buildup on it, which we can't get out right now, but that's fine. We're not worried about it yet until we screw it in and probably get it out. What it does, it creates us, you know, blue Loctite and red Loctite. It's liquid form. Some people get it. I heard that you can even get it like in a chapstick form. That's what APM said. Um, it, what it does is you gloss it on there and eventually cements it, cements the threads in, the, in with the thread. So that's why you can only use it between threads. It just helps the vibration from not breaking the thread loose and, you know, slowly and surely. You know, what vibration does to a, a screw like this, eventually it starts spinning on its own. Well, not spinning like quickly or nothing, but little by little, each turn matters until it becomes so loose. There it goes, you're gone. It's like what we happen to loss. These bolts are GY6, you know, they vibrate a lot, so you want to make sure you prepare yourself. Okay, so there we go. This, this is definitely a needed one. If we lose this guy, it's going to be harder to find a fitment for him. Especially with the opening. I guess this is just a smooth opening. Uh, speaking of cleaning, I think I want to go ahead and clean that uh, starter motor. I saw something black and gunky in there. I think it might be, I'm hoping it's just paint, which we can take with parts cleaner real quick on my new uh, Shenyi starter motor, which I don't like that. Look at that. Look at that gunk. That's what's on. It's like removing earwax. I knew that everything we crack open is going to have some gunk, so we might as well crack it open now, right? Including the gas tank, which I have not taken it off yet, but I'm almost tempted to. Huh. If I take off the gas tank, I might be able to get to the rear view. I'm thinking if I take off this gas tank, I could put this on top. It might serve me a purpose, it might not really. But I was able to probably see a little bit more from the underneath view of where this guy is angled at. There must be a way we can figure out how to get this, you know, to tape it off. I'm thinking of using masking tape, go across it, go crisscross it. I don't know. Any way I can try to really get a feel for where that. Uh, that thread should be. But before we even do that, we gotta really figure out why it's not closing fully. So we can make sure that when this guy does close fully, our little hole that we made would not, you know, ha would not have a problem aligning to where it should have been. All right, so this is it, the last two little washers here that we're probably gonna replace anyway. And we're probably gonna replace them with um, Nordalock. Why not, right? Nordalock makes this damn good washer. But I think the other one we probably can't because it was already, what do you call it, thin already. So we might not be able to use Nordalock because Nordalock creates a lot more thickness. We could probably replace this guy with Nordalock, but not that one. That one we might just replace with a regular thin washer, a brand new one anyway. Because these guys look like they've been pretty toast. But we'll keep them in the same pack just to make sure. Here, let me screw this one in. This one had the new one, right? So we'll keep them with his new one. Can't be unfair to him. He didn't do this damage. All right. So this is it. These guys here will go in the pack. This one, well, let me clean this guy out. Clean this other hole out. I didn't clean this one. Shame on me. Gotta get them all clean. Ripping this fine. There we go. <laughs> All right. 
So here we go. This one would have been like that, sort of like this. I guess this guy just actually just sits there pretty, huh, with it. Doesn't really look like it, I guess it just holds him from going outward the other way. It's weird how it does hold it, though. It looks like he can go through him a little bit. It doesn't look like he has that much lip to really hold him there, but it does. Let me see if we can go through it this way, see? Can't. So I guess he's made one side to loop in, like, for the mirrors. This one, this is the one that drives in. And this one probably drives into the ramp mount. This is where a ramp mount goes, and this one goes into our, um, we call that, our uh, mirror controllers, our controllers, our switches, our handlebar switches. This is this one here. But yeah, and then he had several of these different, uh, this one was sitting on top. Fortunately, it was just hideous. Um, this one, we're probably going to put Norda Lock here. So we'll, we'll keep this, you know, together in the mirror pack here. So we can prove when they come. To, well, I think they're all in here, really. All the all the RAM mount assembly and stuff like this are in here, including the Norda Lock, which just kind of gathered on me. Yeah, right. It wasn't the Norda Lock that fell on this guy. It was a little star one. Which, oh, here's one. So we'll put them in among all these guys here. I'll have to get another little, little bag for these guys. I think I do have one laying around that we didn't use. You remember that bag that we're gonna put our mix in? I was like, nah, it was too light. It might just totally ruin everything. <laughs> Look how things roll and disappear in my socket. 17 millimeter. <laughs> I will be trying to find that guy when I need to use him. Like, okay, where are you? Where are you, little bag when I need you? There we go. We'll put them in this little ziplock here that we had. That way we won't lose any of them. All these little accessories for it. I think that was it, right? There's no other little, oh, there it goes, this guy. So they're clean and ready to roll. All right, so we'll leave them in there like that. Put them in the box still. With a cool cup holder. I really like this cup holder. It's definitely a keeper. Or one of the must haves. As long as it's stabilized, which I assume it will. Alright, let me put this Norda lock in with this. Make sure we get them in there. This is just one of the connectors. Uh, I mean, USB, which are just equally important. Um, we'll get a chance to mess with all the front handlebar stuff as soon as we get our rear sorted out. Which we're about to today. Today I marked the fact that we're gonna drill that hole and we're gonna get that guy mounted. There's no question but whatsoever. Uh, even when we have to work till midnight, we will definitely get that hole mounted. I'm saying that now, but we'll see. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and put this guy's socket back over there. Before we lose him. All right, so this is it. This is all the tools we need to be able to finish our project and mount and Phillips and Allen's. And there's a socket drill driver, a little small one. Oh. I thought we had a little small one out yet. Nope. There's a big one here, but where's the small one? We might have them somewhere here because we, we were planning to use them to tighten things down. Speaking of which, let me put this guy back here. It's just stepped on him. Okay. Alright, so let me go and find that socket real quick. He's got to be here. Where did he just disappear to? He's not in that tool chest, is he? Thought I took him out. Well, we'll need, oh, there he is, a little small guy. We'll need him. Throw his stuff away. Ugh. All right, let me close the gate a little bit. Nice day today, like the sun's out. 
and in fact we might have to paint the rear too so that's something else we got to work on perhaps got to paint the rear of the the scooter before we actually put the, the actual cover back on maybe what we can do is take it apart right now right i think we should take it apart really investigate see what's the deal what's the hole up um in the meantime i'm going to try a few methods to this madness here I'm just going to try this for a sake. We won't remove the plastic yet. What I'm going to do is take this off. First of all, I don't know if this goes a little bit more down where it still lifts up. Looks like the only reason it doesn't go all the way down is probably have this bolt here. So if I tighten this bolt, see where it goes further. And I want to go back and tighten this guy. So let's go and fix and see what we can do as far as this guy goes first. So let me go ahead and take this guy off. So here we go, we're gonna get started right now. Preparing this guy to see where he's gonna be molded at. Molded and scolded. Ah, uh, there it goes, I'm thinking again. I gotta fix that other one I promised myself to do. I can't stand dirt. So let me get my little shop rag. Get a little electric parts cleaner. I guess it's electric, right? It's fine. Let's see where, see where that Shen Yi starter motor, see that little dirt there? I don't know where the heck it came from. There you go. I would never seen it if I didn't see it from the from the top view. But you guys can see what you, see that? Look at that. Let's paint the brick. So we're gonna spray him right now. Squeeze, I guess. Sort of. There we go. Let's see if I can give a good spray. Directly in the problem area. Oh man, this thing is tight. And it's full too, so I don't know what's the deal with that. I'm shaking, it's cold. Mm. But nothing's coming out. How could you have a full can and not have anything come out? Oh, that is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, it's not gonna come out, it's not gonna come out. We can use the throttle air body cleaner, which always did us good anyway. There it goes. CRC makes a good brand. All right, so should I fill the angle? There we go. One, two, three. All right, there we go. That's enough. Take a little shop rag. Dirt be gone, will ya? Wow, this is a pretty thick smudge. I'm we'll have to. I'm always get down there and grit. Sort of scrape them a little bit. I'll do it with my fingernails, so it's not going to be that harsh. But yeah, he's, I don't know what could have got on there that caused it to leave such a strong residue. Oh, sorry. All right. I only got that much out of him so far. I don't know why. Where he got that dirt from, man. We didn't even take it off-roading or anything like that. It's supposed to be a brand new part. Let me do it again. All right. There we go. Sort of. Looks like it's breaking into it now. Gotta get the chemical to break. Speaking of getting the chemicals break, let's get this guy another spray. 